max b from join zero dot co looking at your website i can't help but have this early startup vibe and i i have a feeling that you guys have a time of your life is that yeah. so <laughs> yeah that's right that's right uh, um yeah it's very um early uh, in our journey i would say in uh with zero we are the early days and uh and yeah so it's very startup part of you but uh that's exactly what you said is a project of our life because uh it's a topic that we deeply love and deeply are uh, passionate about and so yeah so that's uh, finally the startup we always dreamed to start uh, and finally we do it so so what's the topic health and longevity uh to describe what uh, join zero is we do um preventive diagnostic platforms where people can get tested uh, two times a year for uh, 50 biomarkers and uh, we offer uh, that to uh, a lab close to your place. We started it a couple of weeks ago in France, and it's coming to Europe. And um, we do the analysis. We do the recommendation on like uh, what's uh, what's good, what's not good, what you should improve, where you stand. So it's it's uh, the idea is to give you a picture of where you stand yeah, with your health and uh, also see if we can detect some like trends and like see if there's anything uh, wrong or disease prevention, I would say. And and then we help people put like, uh, like change their behaviors, like uh, nutrition-wise, uh, exercise-wise, sometimes uh, drugs or supplement, what they should take or if they're missing something uh, with their nutrition. Um, yeah, and, and that's that's what we do. And we started Zero as a community uh, uh, around the topics of like longevity and health and how to live a, a healthy life uh, till 100. Um, and it's, the, the project was called like Zero Club and we started uh, as a European community. People join from uh, all over Europe and we help people like find the right products they were looking for, find the right plans, find the right protocols that fits their life uh, in terms of like uh, improving their health, improving their, um, yeah, just uh, longevity or everything. So yeah, so that's how we started. And now we have these like uh, preventive diagnostic platforms where we help people uh, get better. And I heard you guys are selling some snake oil as well. Could you talk about that? Yeah, that's right. Along the process of like building the community and um, before like building this like uh, preventive diagnostic platforms, one of the big pain of the community was to source like the right product. Um, there's like basic products that you need to have like in terms of like uh, health and longevity and olive oil is one of them. And it's one that is very like uh, Brian Johnson is talking a lot about. The thing that he sourced the best olive oil for for him that you that you're selling in the in the U.S. and the, um, it was a little bit weird to us because like um, his supply comes from Portugal and Spain, so it goes through the U.S. and then you order from the U.S. and if you if you're European, it's coming back again from the U.S. So it's a little bit like crazy to think about that. So we decided to. Um, source a great olive oil as well and we found one in uh, in italia uh we tested it for many many markers and that's the one that we're saying now and i think brian johnson did this like funny jokes about snake oils uh and he renamed his oil snake oil r uh, r is not the same but uh, and we decided to launch this like a uh, supplement brand uh, around longevity called zero nutrition and we have like um uh, a supplement for the morning. We have the olive oil, and we we are like uh, working on like a, a sleep um, a formula to get to help people uh, sleep better because sleep is a foundation of like longevity. Um, and we have like many more products coming soon. So yeah, so we we are, we are having this like uh, uh, yeah brands of like supplement uh, longevity supplement, um, and yeah, and the oil is part of, of it. I also want to note that. That, that's really interesting that you said that they are sourcing from Portugal, shipping to the U.S. and then shipping back. But uh, the shipping back is not happening, I believe, because 
around half a year ago, I wanted to, to buy some snake oil. And it turns out there are very few European countries it's shipping. It is not shipping to my country. All right, so what can I do? I found a coincier, Bitcoin coincier from Poland, uh, and they are shipping to Poland. That's one of the very few European countries where they are shipping. And I, I tried to order it through, through them, right? Uh, shipping to Poland and then to Hungary, whatever. But they had problems with the customs. And for yeah. half a year, there was a back and forth. And the end result is that I didn't ever receive the product. Oh, <laughs> it, it got, give me back the money, right? But, but so, so I'm not even sure if you can even get that in Europe at this point. Uh, you, you can get it. In France, you, you get it. Some of our friends uh, did order it and we tried it like a couple of weeks ago, actually. Um, and we also, you can also, um, uh, buy the, the supplement and they shipped, they ship, uh, okay in France. But you sometimes have some problem with customs, uh, especially, uh, when they come in, uh, Europe, they, 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 they come through like, um, Netherlands, I think. And I had, one issue one time with like one package and that lost that was lost at the custom uh, in Netherlands but uh, yeah, and I think Brian is planning to open a storage facility in the, in Europe so you, you can ship better in Europe I think at some point in 2025 he's probably going to do that it's on this one map alright so I'm going to have some more questions about join zero yep. but I also want to get into our main topic but one, one more question, one more question. So yes, zero, all right. Brian is, is big on zero and zero principle thinking. Um, yeah. What is uh, zero principle thinking? Can you tell me or, or should I try to give it my best shot? Yeah. Yeah. Give it your best shot. <laughs> give it my best shot. All right. Okay. So, 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 so there is the first principle thinking, right? That you go from what you, very strongly know or believe to be the case and you're trying to build up some conclusions out of that to solve your problem mm -hmm. and what brian is trying to say here with the zero principle thinking that hey uh let's take a step back and try to actually find the right problem instead of just going at any kind of problem so what he believes is the genius and I think it's 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 pretty sophisticated. I, I'm not quite sure it it is quality contribution to the field of thinking and philosophy, but it might be, you know. So so it's so it's interesting that you want to aim at the right targets. I my understanding is that's the gist of zero principle thinking. But my question to you is that does your company have anything to do with this or 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 where did the name come from i mean um so yeah it's a good question so we decided to um and people know that uh we decided to um to call a zero club because of uh, the zero principle from brian johnson uh, i mean not the zero principle but uh, because at some point he started to tweet about it and he started to rename himself on twitter as zero and he was found uh, like he was really found off about these books like the zero like uh, 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 how zero changed the, the humanity and um, and it was very interesting so um, and the zero principle I would say uh, it's more like it's we 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 have this sort of like a principle at zero like uh, now in a way that. Um, we really assume like nothing is impossible and um, and we always try to look at every problem in a different way. Uh, so I, I believe it's part of like the zero principle, but uh, yeah, we, we don't like, we didn't really like really name the community zero because that it was more because of like Brian being like uh, uh, zero. And we started as that because we were the first like community, like, when we initially started like the Zero Club, it was really the community of like people interested in Brian Johnson uh, Blueprint Protocol. And then we extended a, a bit, like we had people joining from like different like uh, perspective of different ideas. And they were like, people were really uh, looking 
for like a um, way to get better and not necessarily like applying all like the, the uh, Brian Johnson principle. So we extended that and we try to summarize like what's the, the science today um, about like uh, nutrition for longevity, what's the um, uh, exercise for longevity, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what we try to do. But initially we really like well, like the only like people passionate about like Brian Johnson, really like uh, impressed by what he was doing, and we were like, okay, we want to to meet each other and to to talk to each other and see like uh, are we the only one in Paris or in France uh, like following this Brian crazy blueprint, or is there any other guy out there that would be interesting? Uh, that, that would be that are interested by uh, his protocol or just applying his protocol and just discovering that there were people actually outside of like our circle of people that were interested in that. We were like, wow, this is so cool. So that's how we created the the community. And I think I did it after a couple of weeks. Uh, we renamed a zero club, and then we 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 just kept the branding around zero. <laughs> so everything, uh, everything, uh, yeah. We, we are like joinzero.co with the website and uh, and uh, we are like zero health for the platforms and we have zero nutrition for all for, for the supplements. So, yeah. All right. Zero is a cool number. Yeah. Um, also. And you, you probably want to go back to zero when you, you slowly edge backward and go back to <laughs> almost zero. So that's, that's a little bit the joke. Like, yeah, we... We want to uh, bring you from zero to one hundred, but maybe in the in the way around. Yeah. Well, I mean, zero and infinity are quite similar, so exactly. You might you can go forward to get to zero. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. Now um, the reason that you're here, so this is called uh, Immorta Combat uh, podcast series because I started covering the Rejuvenation Olympics and okay. I started to branch out to similar, looking to similar attempts, similar leaderboards. And I noticed you guys have a um, VO2 Max leaderboard. Now, is it because the co founders are called Max? Uh, that's a good point. Uh, I never thought about that. No, no, this is not because of that. We, uh, what everything we we do at uh, at zero is uh, trying to make things accessible, to make longevity accessible, to make better health accessible, uh, easy. So when we say accessible, it's like it's not very, it's not expensive. You can you can you can get access to it, and it's local, it's um, affordable, it's uh, easy to implement in your life. And um, and uh, something we noticed was um, the problem with the reju rejuvenation dash like uh, leaderboard is that you have to do a test first, and you have to take the test like the true diagnostic test, which is very expensive. And um, we wanted to have a way for people when they joined the community, because it was exactly that. People were joining the community and they were starting to exchange with people. They were starting to look at our guides on like nutrition and exercise and everything. And they were like starting to very passionate about the topic. And, but they needed a way to, um, where do I stand in my journey? Like, well, what's, what's my current health status? And that's the reason why we, we launched the diagnostic platform. But before that, you're probably not ready to commit to such a high uh, entry fee, I would say. So true diagnostic is $500. Um, zero platform is like $400 like euros a year for two, two sets of like diagnostics. But uh, so we looked into like the all the scientific like um, content and everything. And we found that uh, one of the things that Peter Atia was talking a lot about was like VO2 max. And it was like, and, it, and when we did some research around VO2 max, it's not the perfect proxy, but it's a good proxy to, I know there's like um, these like things with cardio and et cetera. So, but it's a somewhat good proxy for like um, knowing where you stand with your health. 
And it's super easy. Like everybody, not everybody, but almost everybody has like a Garmin, has like a, an Apple Watch or like any like a Fitbit or whatever, like Whoop or Ua or any like uh, wearables that can give you your view to max. So most of people have that. So it means that it's a way for people when they join the community, straight away, they can just like compare themselves to the others and just see like, Okay, you're 35 and you're a, a woman and you have like, I don't know, 50, 60 <laughs> um, in view to max. Wow, this is really cool. You're very high in the, in the, based on your age and like your category or based on, on the people in the community. You're very like, you're scoring very high or you're scoring somewhat low or et cetera. So that's, that's the reason why we choose like the view to max. We found it with, it was more accessible for people to like just compare themselves to the other than like the rejuvenation leaderboard, which is which is really cool. I mean, I love this uh, leaderboard, and I think it uh, uh, the fact that it exists is really cool. But you have to take the test, and it costs a lot, and you have to, to wait to get your results and to like uh, sign up in the leaderboard, etc. So with like the view to max leaderboard, you just have to, oh, okay, my view to max is 47. Okay, let's take a picture and add my name in the, in the list. Let's take a step back to zero. Uh, what yeah. is VO2 max? So the VO2 max is um, um, your capacity, your lunch capacity to, um, to uh, treat oxygen. Um, and it's your maximum capacity to, um, to ingest if I can say that, uh, the, the, uh, uh, oxygen. Um, and it's measured with like a, a tracker. Um, and usually you do, like you can go in a lab or place to test your view to max if you want to have a very precise um, measure of your view to max. They, they put you like a, a breathing like mask and they put, like they ask you to run and they, uh, for one minute, uh, and they increase the cadence, um, and uh, and at some point you're gonna reach your maximum and you're gonna stop, and that's how you. And I think we measure it for a minute every. It's one or two minutes, I think. So every time uh, you're able to like uh, run for like and breathe and uh, <laughs> and be okay for a minute or two, um, then we increase the the pace and. Um, and the maximum pace is your maximum view to max. And it gives you like, and based on your age, and um, it gives you a, a good approximate of like, okay, uh, are you in good shape? Because if you're too fat, you're gonna be, uh, you're gonna have problems to run. And if you're too like, uh, you can, if you smoke, if you, if you don't eat correctly, if you don't sleep correctly, et cetera, et cetera. So your, your view to max will be impacted by that. So, that's the reason we say it's a good proxy for like measuring your overall health. And you believe it's probably a better proxy than, let's say, grip strength or, or, or any other metrics, X with the exception of maybe, maybe some biological ages, which are like actually trying to measure your biological age. So that seemed to be the best metric there. Yeah. It's- I, I wouldn't say it's better than uh, grip strength, or, uh, or I think it's uh, complementary to the to that. So in the in the in the zero uh, zero protocol, uh, when we advise people, we have we have a, a guide somewhere on our website. When you join the community, and you, we we have like a lot of content on like uh, nutrition, exercise, etc. And uh, we do like we advise people to do. Three simple, um, three simple tests. There's um, the squat test, and there's like the push-up test. So, how many squats can you do in one minute? Can you? How many push-ups can you do in one minute? And the VO2 max. And also, I know there's also a grip uh, strength. Uh, Brian is talking a lot about that. I mean, not anymore, but he used to talk. And in the list of things that he recommend to buy. Is like recommending to buy these things you, you, you use. Dialamometer. Yeah, exactly. So you, you do that and you, because you say that um, the, the strength in your hand is really, a, again, a proxy for like um, getting old. And it's true that 
my grandparents probably can't like uh, do like uh, I don't have a lot of like her force anymore in the end and they can't do the same thing as I can or my wife sometimes is just asking me to open a bottle and she can't even open the bottle that is very like um, and I'm always constant I'm like you should be able to open that <laughs> so you should do a lot of like uh, grief strength um, uh, so so yeah so, so I, I wouldn't say it's better but it's just a uh, an easy uh, way to do that because to measure your grip strength, you need to have a dynamometer, uh, something like that. And so you need, again, you need to have something to do it, to measure it. And um, you have to have this tool in comparison of like the view to max, where probably most of the people have their view to max just on their, on their wrist. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes. So, do you have any experience on the accuracy of... Okay, let, let, let me just throw out a bunch of uh, VO2 max measurements and what my my experience with the, with the accuracy yes. was. Yes. Um, yeah. You already described the main measurement where you put on a mask and you get on a treadmill and then you start walking and they are yeah. making it faster and more inclined. Um, now, that's actually pretty hard to... To, to get because the, the treadmill I was looking into that the treadmill actually has to go much more inclined than most treadmills are 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 getting at so that's that that was the problem that I found for me okay. and I couldn't even found a, any place where I can measure my wheel too much in other than if I would go to a big city and 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 I would yeah. try that. So so anyway, then then there are other ways. Um, one is that maybe new for you is that true diagnostic is an epigenetic proxy for for VO2 max, and I found that extremely inaccurate. Um, or there are well, what 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 I did, what I think the most accurate is that I I made ChatGPT design a protocol. So I can do it with my own treadmill, you know. Okay. And uh, interesting. Possibly that's the closest number I I get to my my bill to max to figure it out. But uh, but I also have an ordering, and I also tried to to do it with an ordering, and 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 and, and it gave me a terrible number, like. Oh. Like I'm like a non-functioning woman or something, so <laughs> oh, wow. I wasn't I wasn't very happy with the ordering yeah. accuracy. So I'm wondering what's your what's your yeah. experience in accuracy of what do you have here? You have Garmin ordering yeah. normal measurements. Yeah. So what's your experience? Yeah. 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 So um, definitely, first thing is. All these wearables will give you an idea of your um, of your VO2 max, but definitely not the right one. They 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 they're all inaccurate. That's that's true. We know it, but it's just give you just a way to give you an idea. And also, you can see the trends, which is interesting. If you if you're trying to improve your VO2 max, if your VO2 max is improving, you're gonna see it on the on the wearables. And even if you are starting from like a, not the right point, you you, you're going to see the trends. So it's interesting. Just in that way, it's easy to measure every day. If you go to, to um, do some running every day or like to do some uh, exercise, you're going to see like the trends um, up or down and you, you're going to see if something is okay or something is off. Um, so one thing is, I would say that what we've seen, so that this is the reason also why in the leaderboard we ask which uh, wearables you use to report that net number because we've seen, we've noticed there's like differences between UA, between like Garmin, between uh, Apple Health, uh, Apple Watch, um, all these things. So um, usually we found that Garmin might be the closest uh, to the, the real one. Uh, we have quite a few people in the community that did the test, the real test on the treadmills, and um, and that were a Garmin, and the numbers were super close. So so for them, so um, 
again, it's not uh, probably statistical, <laughs> statistically significant on everything, but that's just a trend. So I would say that in the order of like, and the UA uh, view to max is really recent. Like the algorithm for UA, from UA, they just released that a couple of like uh, weeks ago, I would say, I, I believe. Um, so maybe it's because of that their like algorithm is not super, I don't know again, what are they using for like measuring that? Um, I, I haven't like looked uh, into it too much, uh, but yeah, in general, like um, Garmin, then Apple Watch, maybe the closest one to the, maybe the probably the best one. Um, even Whoop doesn't have the view to max. I have a, a Whoop as well, and uh, it, 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 it doesn't give you the the the, the view to max. So, so yeah, so. Um, in terms of accuracy, I would say definitely coming. It's good enough for a game. Um, yeah. All right. Um, now I have a question. Who is Joe Martin, number one? Do you know anything about him? No. Unfortunately, no. He's part of the community, but uh, I don't know. I don't know him personally. How can someone get in the leaderboard? Um, you need to go on joinzero.co. You need to... Um, uh, sign up for um free account uh, we have we have a sort of like a uh, so we design uh, on the we design a platform and you can join it uh for free uh, you just go and sign up or login uh you create an account and you join for free and then in the in the dashboard the main dashboard you see the leaderboards uh join the view to make leaderboard and you can just like follow the steps and we just ask you to give you your name and the uh, the number uh, and just a proof of like uh, the the real uh, that it's real. Otherwise, you could like cheat. All right, all right. Well, let's talk about the big picture a bit. Um, so this this uh, this podcast series is mainly so far mainly about the rejuvenation Olympics. Okay, but uh, I I might have mentioned it before, but I'm currently working on the Longevity World Cup 2025, so I am also launching a competition here. Um, do you have any any vision or big thoughts about longevity as a sport or the emerging longevity sport yeah. industry? Yeah, I think... Um... <sighs> I don't know if it's going to, I mean, pe people are interested in longevity more and more. That's all. Uh, I know that uh, the rejuvenation leaderboard is a sort of like gamifying the, the, the goal. And the first thing is that to gamify something, you need to have like a way to uh, measure it regularly uh, to see the progress. Because if you see the progress, you're incentivized into like uh, doing better, doing better, doing better. And that's what we're seeing in the community. So I would say that... Um, if you're working on this leaderboard 2025, like World Cup 2025, um, this is amazing and this is really um, exciting. And I think there's a place in the world where uh, later, maybe in a couple of years from now, there will be people uh, very into like positive like behaviors, I would say. That's what tra Brian Johnson is trying to, to, to do is that, okay, why are we... Um, Destructing ourselves uh, with all these like behavior, like drinking alcohol, like drinking, like uh, drinking shitty foods and stuff like that. When we know it's bad for our health, and we are trying to change the mindset, mindset, and we are trying to uh, have people uh, very like passionate about taking care of their body and taking care of their health. So in that sense, I'm I'm sure it's gonna take off, and it's gonna be more and more people like. Um, like you say, athletes of the longevity um, in the future. I'm, I'm got, we, we are seeing more and more Brian Johnson out there, um, so, which is cool. Uh, also, to, to do that and to do this revolution, I really think that we need to find a way to um, simplify how we measure that and how we measure progress. Because like taking like the true diagnostic text test today is is amazing, but it's just like not for everybody. It's like five hundred bucks per like test, um, and it's too expensive today. Um, 
So I believe if you need to start a, a revolution around that, <laughs> you need to um, make this accessible. That's exactly what we're trying to do at zero. Um, so yeah, so that's my take on that. And I'm sure there are going to be like more and more people in those competitions. And I don't know if there will be like if uh, one day there will be official Olympics, <laughs> rejuvenation Olympics. But I think that's cool. I mean, that, that that's really exciting to see like people finding each other. Like, oh, I have the lowest pace of aging <laughs> of the planet. Or like, uh, okay, um, I'm better than you, etc. Cetera, et cetera. We can see that the sense of like the human are very competitive. Like uh, so, so that's a, I think, a good path <laughs> for that uh, to trigger that that good behavior in people is like gamifying and trying to do these things. Yeah, that's my. It, it 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 does seem to me that you have stumbled upon the major issue here, which is that what's the number, the measuring, the measurement system here? That what are we measuring here? And yeah. I'm trying to in in the longevity world cup i and I will sidestep this issue by saying that every year I choose a different metric okay. and maybe as scientists figure out better and better metrics i can I can get more and more closer to perfect, even if we never get to perfect that way. So I, I will start with phenoage, by the way, which is uh, you can go to a laboratory to to measure a couple of biomarkers and yeah, and uh, we'll see how that will turn out. But uh, let me try to to sell and you. How do you uh, just sorry? Uh, how do people apply for your work? Of like, is it like uh, so for twenty twenty five? What what metric did you pick? It's gonna be the phenoage. Pheno, phenoage. Yeah. Okay. So. It is that you have to go to a laboratory, do a couple yep. of biomarkers like active protein, creatinine, uh, whatnot, and and you have to type it in, upload a proof just like yours, and 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 get on the leaderboard. Yeah, yeah, we we do we do offer those um, um, measurement in the in the full. Um, yeah, okay, technology. talk about that. Uh, so 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 so. First of all, what are you guys even offering? And and people who later on are when the Longevity World Cup is running are watching this and want to measure those things to enroll them, tell them how can they yeah. use your service to do so. Uh, so um, we have a list of like 50 plus biomarkers for uh, women and men. Um, it's the list is a bit different if you're a man of, or, and a woman because we uh, measure hormones as well. Um, and we offer, so people come to our website, they sign up for it, they, they pay for a year, 400 uh, uh, euros for, per, for a year, and they got 50 biomarkers uh, to, uh, that they can check through a lab. Uh, close to their place. Uh, they go on our website, they search for like their, the closest lab to their place, they book um, an appointment, they go there, they get their blood. Um, oh, sorry, sorry, let, let, let the closest lab, like you have affiliated labs or it's like any lab. Oh, it's, that... we say, yeah, exactly. We, so, so that's the reason why for now uh, we're in France. Uh, yeah, so we signed some deals with like European labs but we started the, the, the experiment. He started in France because it was easier uh, because we were discussing with the French team mostly. Um, so, uh, but those labs have labs across Europe, every, like in most countries across Europe. And uh, we choose labs that are already doing like um, medical testing for, for like a, for the, like the medical, like the states, um, uh, Program usually, so they, they they already exist. They are they are in your, uh, they are uh, close to your place. Uh, we have thousands of labs in Paris uh, from different like um, uh, lab networks, and uh, so we 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 sign deals with those networks. Uh, mm, uh, so far, we have like uh, three deals with three like um, labs uh, networks. Um, so you go on our website, you find the closest, uh, you go there. And they take your blood, 
um, and they do the testing. And then a couple of days after, like probably two or three days after that, you get your results in a, in your like zero uh, apps, zero health app. And we show you like um, your biomarkers in a different, like in, in a different way that the labs used to show you. The labs used to show, give you a PDF with like a range and like a blah, 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 and just no explanation, nothing, just like the, the name of like the biomarkers and the range. And usually it's average range that you don't want necessarily compare to. Um, so we work on that and we f provide you a new UX, uh, showing you what's the markers you should improve, what's the marker, uh, which markers are, are at risk and uh, who are the ones you're very good at. Um, we also highlight if you're in the top 10% of your category, um, stuff like that. So we really worked on the range, a pair like your age, pair like if you're a male or a woman, um, etc. So uh, we give you an each biomarkers. We explain what it is, uh, why uh, you should stand in that range, and um, and what you could do to uh, what can you do in terms of nutrition or exercise to have an impact in that biomarker. And there's a summary, a global summary of like your other health and like what's the, what's, uh, what we learned from this test. Um, that's what we give to people. And then you're going to decide to improve some of the markers. You're going to decide to, okay, I need to change my nutrition because I discovered that I'm like a free diabetics or like because I have like a, something like a, I'm going to take supplements because I'm missing like some vitamins or like minerals or like nutrients or whatever. So I'm going to change my nutrition. So you're going to do that and you're going to have some action steps. And then six months later, you're going to do the testing again. Sometimes, um, Usually, when you start doing some changes in your daily life, um, you on certain markers, you want to get tested again in three months from now, not six months, not waiting six months, but three months. So we're going to offer like some options to retest some of the markers um, more regularly. But um, every, like all these, like we negotiate that with labs, but all these markers, they are very expensive. So it's like 400 bucks or two times a year. And usually if you go to a local labs and you ask, you take the list of biomarkers, at the 50 plus, and you go to your local labs and you ask them, you, you, you tell them, okay, I'm okay to pay for that. I want to do the testing. Either they're going to look at you. Okay. You need to have a prescription from a doctor. Sometimes it happens. They're not ready to, uh, to let you pay for that. And when they are ready to let you pay for that, they're going to ask you like probably more than six to eight uh, hundred euros for one test for one screening and we offer two so that's that's what we did we did like the the deal with the lab networks and we we try to lower the price but at some point what we're selling like right now for 400 bucks is there's almost no margin for us it's just like we want to offer the best for people so we're trying to to we try to to have this like a uh, affordable uh, entry fee uh, entry price and also get a good understanding of your health. So it was a, a decision between like, okay, which biomarker should we include and which one should we not include by default? Um, but which biomarkers are essential to give a good idea of your overall health? So that's, that, that's the, how we choose the list of biomarkers. We've, uh, we have a, a doctor, a functional doctor in the team. So she, she, she worked on that. And um, yeah, and that's what we offer for, for now. And, in the future, probably we're going to work on the action steps. We're going to work on like your recommendations. But for now, it's mainly like the test, biomarkers analysis, and like explanation on like which biomarkers, where you stand, and what you could do. Um, but simple recommendation. Let's focus on the future here because I, I think there is a revolution going on that not many people are realizing yet. You're familiar with epigenetics, right? Yeah. There are epigenetic markers and people can get out all kinds of information from them. But, you know, what's interesting is that you can get out from epigenetic markers information that is traditionally only available from traditional blood tests. So the idea is that, let's say, vitamin D level 
Um, no, no, no. Let's let's go to glucose level. That's that's yeah. much sim- that, that's a better example because your glucose levels are going up and down almost in a you know, in a daily level, right? Like in an hourly level, like your your blood glucose, and but your epigenetic fingerprints of glucose is is a much more longer time frame that how much glucose was going on in your body in the last three months something like that so that's how the epigenetics are different from traditional blood tests but the point is that you can actually mine out a lot of information from epigenetics and it is just a single finger prick right so what just happened like a week ago is that True Diagnostic announced True Health, which is a home test kit. You know, uh, they send you the a package, you do a finger prick, and you send them the sample. And, and they are looking at 150 biomarkers, right? So it's like assuming it will work, right? <laughs> If it works, then it really is going to blow my mind because I had so much problems in getting, well, first of all, to, to get get a lab any nearby. Uh, but even when there is a lab, they are only checking like 20 things. And as you said, if I want more, then money is just one thing, right? Like I have to pay more money if they are even checking it, but also I have to give a lot more blood, like a lot of blood. If I would want to test 150 biomarkers, I think I wouldn't have blood left. That's how much blood they would be taking from me with their methods. So, so may, may, maybe you wanna, if it works out, maybe you wanna check that out because, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm checking it. Out. Um, yeah, so this is pretty interesting. This is different markers. These markers, uh, and you know that, that that is the 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 scandal with uh, Theranos, the starlet that exploded. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, there's certain markers that you can't measure with just one drop of, of blood, and that's that's it. That's physical, and you can't like so uh, the 150 biomarkers that they claim to uh, measure are like really like. Not necessarily the same that uh, you need to measure on a, on a monthly or t- three monthly basis, and the one that are included in our list. And those in our list, there's some of them probably it will work with the system, but I'm not sure. But some of them it won't, it, it will never work. And that's the reason why we choose like uh, a lab networks is that it's exactly what function function health is doing in the US. Like they work with like labs. The, the biggest networks, the lab networks in the US, um, because for this reason is that there's no way you can measure like some stuff um, if you don't give like a lot of blood. Um, and the second part of that, is the, we, we also choose like uh, labs um, where you go and they take your blood because the way you take the blood is very like could have an impact, a huge impact on like the, the results. And uh, if someone is coming to your home and uh, a nurse is coming to your home and taking your blood, and if she uh, or he uh, doesn't bring back the, uh, the blood uh, straight away to the labs, if um, this person waits a couple of hours and put the, the blood samples in the car with like the sun or anything like heat or cold or whatever, some of the marker will be off. And so you need to centrifugate. Sometimes you need to... Um, a freeze. Sometimes you need to have uh, the store at uh, room temperature. So for each markers, there's a really, really um, thorough process for like measuring it. And even the 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 order of like the tubes that they're taking the tubes. Some of the tubes have like some product in it that uh, just like uh, put some some product in the blood so that it's it it stops the process of like the, the blood oxidating and uh, and if you do that tube before the other one you're gonna you're gonna kill the the results of like the glucose for instance or like the LDL or HDL or whatever so um, my take on that is that what true diagnostic announce is very exciting but it's they measure different things they measure the the pace of aging of like each like uh, of your organs 
and uh, it's it's epigenetic text. But uh, let's say uh, if you want to um, measure your glucose, your uh, HbA1c or like uh, LDL, HDL, or like some marker like like that, you need to have like more blood. And to do that in a proper way and to make sure that the results are accurate, you need to most of the time go to a lab. So that's my that's my answer. <laughs> but I dream of and and also all these uh, companies. So I know true diagnostic is different because they you put the blood on a on a little bit of like a, a paper and uh, they have like a product in it. And it's uh, stopped uh, the process of the blood, um, and uh, and it's fine for what they measure, but it doesn't work for everything. And all the, the we have like labs in Europe, and probably you have that in Hungary. Uh, is uh, uh, they send you a kit at home, and you find a nurse. They take the, the blood, and you get, you send it back by the post. And don't do that. <laughs> the, the you you're gonna have like very off results uh yeah it's not possible to like uh, to send the blood back in a good um in a good uh it's not going to be accurate all your results uh all your results will be off Espe I i'm talking about the when you take tubes of uh, blood not the the one that true diagnostic is doing it's just like one one small um drops of like blood and that is fine for what they're measuring and you with that um Sometimes we've seen some people that have some very odd results with like um, with like the blood drop, and uh, so yeah. So I'm a bit skeptical about sending back your blood to a company <laughs> through the <laughs> through the world and get like very accurate results. So yeah. Last time we couldn't schedule because you had something with your family it came up. So that gives me an impression that. You have a bunch of family responsibilities and you're also doing the joinzero.co company. And you're probably trying to get your health um, together and, and, and be in as good condition as you can be. So how do you juggle between those three? And is there fourth responsibilities for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's a tough question. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm usually uh, not complaining. So, uh, but uh, it's it's not easy to on a daily basis. To be honest, to um, get the good food, get enough exercise per week, uh, take care of your kids, uh, take care of uh, your family, your wife, spend time with your wife. Um, and still build a company uh, because we are started in the early days and you have to work a lot. So getting good sleep, <laughs> uh, all these things. Um, I really believe in the 20, 80% rules. So that's what I'm trying to, to do right now. With like um, applying the 20% and that will give me the 80% outcomes on my health. Uh, but uh, I, can't, I can't really like do everything I would love to, but that's okay. That's uh, that's life. Uh, so, so yeah, you you have responsibilities. You have to to uh, to do them, and uh, and especially like I would say the, the, the hardest part of that is like um, um, food and sleep. Right now, with like uh, with uh, with small kids. Uh, my kids are super young; they are three and two. So, uh, so it's not easy. On a yeah, yeah, you need to. Uh, so, did they only eat something that I wouldn't? <laughs> they don't want to eat vegetables or like things like that. <laughs> they they only want to eat pasta or like. That. <laughs> so it's not it's not easy, uh, but you have to do it. And um, and in the at the end of the day, it's okay. Um, but it's just a matter of like. Uh, yeah, just uh, rules. You, 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 you have to be. You have to be okay with the fact that you're not gonna do everything right, um, and you can't do everything at a maximum that you would love to. But that's okay for the time being. That's part of the. Uh, that's part of life, and you have to do compromise. So, yeah. Every day you juggle between the different <laughs> priority. 
and you decide which one you're going to compromise that day. Very zen, very zen. Give me a low-hanging fruit um, biohack that worked out for you. Oh, um, the biggest. So, two. Uh, coffee. <laughs> so, my, my, I used to have like a, a really, really bad skip. Uh, and um, I stopped coffee. Uh, so, now, to be uh, totally honest, sometimes I drink one real coffee in the morning, like a couple of hours after waking up in the morning, um, not too late in the day, and, but sometimes. But most of the time, I drink decaf. Um, that's my trick because I, I love the taste and I like adding something uh, warm in the morning. Uh, and also, I love the fact that there's no sugar in it. So, uh, so I don't don't really want to replace that with like another drink like that. Uh, so I drink decaf, and that had a huge impact on my sleep. Um, and the second thing I did, I'm trying to do, and again, I can't like I can't really like do it every day, but that's okay. Um, I'm trying to eat earlier in my day, uh, so my last meal. So I'm trying to have my last meal uh, around 5.36 p.m. Um, like a, an American person. Uh, uh, and, and, and this had a huge impact. Uh, it's like the biggest impact so far on my health. It's like on my sleep. And um, so the recovery, my recovery has exploded. Uh, every, every time I do that, my recovery is sugar high because my... Uh, resting up rate, uh, which usually goes down like to the lowest point around 6 a.m. in the morning. And the, the problem is that you have kids and uh, you wake up usually around 7, 7.30, sometimes 8. But I'm um, a late sleeper. So if I sleep till 8, 8.30, if you, if you let me sleep without noise or anything, I would sleep till 8.30. And the time between like 6 a.m. and 8, to me, is like doubling my recovery because of the resting heart rate. And what I found is that if I eat around like 5 p.m., 5.30, 6, um, my uh, resting heart rate will go at the lowest point around 3. When do you sleep? Four, um, 10.30. Uh, and, and yeah, my uh, resting up rate will go down like the, to the lowest point around 3 to 4 a.m. in the morning. So then I got all these hours with like a low resting up rate and that's how I got a good recovery. So, and I'd never tried eating earlier, <laughs> like uh, 2 a.m., 2, 2, 2, 2 p.m. In, in the afternoon or something, starting at 2 p.m. I've never tried that yet, but um, I would love to try one day. Um, but just socially, it's, it's super hard, but yeah, that's okay. So when I, uh, eat early in the, in the afternoon, and then I go back home and I, uh, I sat down with my kids. They eat their, uh, dinner, uh, my wife too, but I just drink like water or like, uh, anything with them. I just sat down and it's, it's even better to me because I don't have the, to think about like my plate, what I'm gonna put in that, and I can just like be with them, like just like focus on them, focus with like talking with them, and that's okay. I drink my, um, I still sat down with them, and we still have like conversation about that day on the, the everything. Just I don't eat, and I do that sometimes, not every day, uh, but when I do it, my sleep is really better. So that's a low end food for like. Uh, to me, it's the biggest, and I, I, I've seen Brian Johnson talking a lot about that lately. So I think that's the lowest hanging fruit you can do to, to in your life is like eating earlier. Yeah, you know, if you're anything like me and you sound similar, then you're already very close to optimal, optimal, um, well, resting heart rate and heart rate variability. So you probably obviously notice that if you're eating, at let's say 9 or 10 p.m., then your resting heart rate and heart rate variability is, is just as bad as, as, as it can be without drinking alcohol. So yeah. around, if you're eating around 8, then it's still bad. Um, now, at the time of eating at 6 or eating at 5, 
Um, I'm I'm not sure at that point if it if it if it gets worse. I mean, if I eat at four or if I eat at five, it makes no difference to me, or I did not okay. notice any difference. Maybe if I do okay. some statistical correlation trickery, then I can find something, but uh, but not not noticeable by intuition at least. So. Uh, it looks to me you're also already pretty close to, to yeah, probably. Well, you're hitting the eighty twenty, right? Yeah. On the co- caffeine stuff, any caffeine is making your sleep worse. Uh, yeah, it's used to. When I um, our chief medical officer, like uh, Emily, um, uh, that's the one of the first thing I did when well, I started to uh, chat with her about my health and I did my first test and we, we started to, to do um, to look at my uh, 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 my uh, numbers and, and everything and I was uh, I was telling her my sleep was like during that great I was waking up a lot during at night and I had travels uh, falling asleep again and uh, all these things um, and she mentioned that she said that um, the caffeine the caffeine cycle uh, is pretty long in the body, so you need to at least stop coffee for a month before seeing any uh, big impact on your on your sleep. And I did try before that during some like uh, stopping caffeine for a week, but I never did that for a month. And I was like, okay, a month seems pretty long. But she was like, because before before that, I was like. I did an experimentation without caffeine for a week, but I stopped also like any decaf, anything, because I was like, I knew that there was a little bit of caffeine in the decaf, but she mentioned to me, that's okay. You can, you can definitely take a decaf. It's okay. Find a good decaf. There's like a good water decaf today, uh, not a decaf animated with like any cover or anything. So you can try that and it's going and it's to be okay. Um, so I switched to that the day after, and for a month I didn't drink any coffee, and and yeah I I started to see uh, the impact after three weeks or so, and yeah the impact is real, um, really. I used to be I used to be a very uh, huge uh, <laughs> caffeine uh, uh, consumer. Uh, I used to drink like four or five uh, cups of coffee. And before that, when I was younger, like oh, 20 something, I used to drink um, Coke Zero a lot. And there's a huge amount of caffeine in that. And I used to drink uh, Coke Zero for like uh, all day <laughs> from the from lunch to, to dinner. And uh, and then I didn't really realize my, my sleep was so bad because of that. I was not like really like, uh, uh, maybe I knew, but maybe uh, I... I, I rather have the 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 coke but uh yeah so 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 yeah i stopped the 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 coke also for like all the shitty product they have in it so i never i never i never get back to that shit uh, again it's been a couple of years now uh and then uh the coffee really changed yeah so if i have a coffee uh in the afternoon then i wake up Around three a.m. in the morning, and I always have some some uh, club like uh, struggle to uh, fall asleep again, and I fall asleep again around five, and then I wake up at seven, and my sleep is really not great. So but yeah, so caffeine is as we, but again, what uh, Emily mentioned to me was uh, there's some people that uh, that um, it just really well caffeine, and they're totally some people you know you you probably know some people like that. They tell you, oh, I can drink a coffee at 6 a.m. and uh, I'm going to sleep like a baby. And you, we all know those, those, those people. And she, she mentioned that it's a, it's a, a biological thing. Like some people can process the caffeine and some people can't. And I'm probably part of those who can't. Uh, really, really good. And so, yeah. I think they are lying. <laughs> no, really? I mean, no. So they don't know that they are lying, but... You see, like, you have uh, sleep trackers and stuff, and that tells you things. But most people, so most people don't even realize their sleep is bad. So, 
That's right. So yeah, let, let's let's say there is the these new GLP one drugs. Uh, you probably heard about them. Yeah. Like people are not talking about it, but it actually ruins completely their resting heart rate and heart rate variability. Like they, well, they ruin them completely, and and it seems that people are not picking it, picking up on it. Just only the ones who are using fitness trackers, and uh, just for normal people who are not sleeping regularly and not monitoring their sleep, they are not picking up that hey, this actually messes up their entire sleep yeah okay. um anyhow let me ask you peter thiel contrarian question are you familiar with that or not yeah all right i'm just gonna pose it point blank what's one thing that you strongly believe to be the case but very few people agree with you on Ooh. I know. Alcohol. Almost never drink alcohol in my, in my entire life. I, and you're in France. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm in France. And it was F hard. <laughs> Especially when I, when I was a student. And I used to live in South of France, which, um, wow, this is insane. The consumption, alcohol consumption is insane during the weekend, during like for, like they have like a, celebration uh, during summer and uh, they only drink like for three, for four or three days they're like all drinks is a village like your know, stuff like that and um mm-hmm. and that culture of like not drinking alcohol in a country that is like promoting wine was like probably unpopular and i got this question every time are you nasty are you sick uh no, I just don't like it. I just don't don't want to drink alcohol because I don't like it. I mean, bad for your health. And what? It's not bad. You're too uh, serious. You're too strict. You're too whatever. Uh, you're boring or like whatever. But uh, a couple of years after, they were like, my friends were pretty happy with my, my choice because they had someone who can drive the car <laughs> after a party. So, 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 but yeah, it's a very unpopular opinion in France. And um, I've never, uh, but also at the same time, I'm not very advocating. Um, I'm someone that um, believes that everyone should do everything. They, I mean, they, they, they should decide for, 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 for themselves. Uh, so if they want to drink alcohol, I'm fine with that. If they don't want, I'm fine with that. But uh, if you ask me what I think, then I'll give you my opinion on that. But uh, just I'm not going to bother people with my thoughts if they don't want to, to hear it. Um, but yeah, probably that. Probably I know alcohol is, I'm like Brian Johnson in that. I know alcohol is very bad for your skin, very bad for your health. And so I don't drink alcohol. All right. All right. Let's finish up with some economics. So you're here um, trying to enrich your value in the world and the market is the feedback mechanism that is giving you the feedback on what what activities that you're doing are the most worthy. Um, The most worthy things that you're doing is that what people are willing to pay money for it. So... My question to you is, what is the thing that people are giving you the most money for? What's the largest value that you create? So the 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 the, the diagnostic the, the diagnostic platform is probably the 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 one that people uh, pay the most, but our supplement as well. So most of the people we give the test uh, also. Uh, order the supplements and the olive oil. Um, so that's the value we provide to the world is that uh, we're helping people get a better help and they and they are ready to pay for it. Well, Max, this is the last time that I will shy away from trying to pronounce your name. Um, thank you very much for coming. Join Zero.co and the uh, VO2 Max leaderboard. It was a... Yeah. Pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me.